Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear brother. The message, it reads like this. Hello brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? So there is this other friend of mine. His sister was like a girlfriend to this other minister, but that minister, the old man, he has since passed away. So through that connection, then my friend, he started making a lot of money. So me and my friend, when we came to South Africa, we did not come here to struggle. We just came here to spend money. And you won't even believe how much money there is in Zim. There are billionaires there that do not even want to be on social media because of the money that they have. So when the old minister was really sick, my friend then told me that he called all of his girlfriends because he had like 10 girlfriends that he had and he had three official wives. So he called all of his girlfriends whom he had children with so that he can give them all money before you would have died. So I don't know how true it is, but my friend, I heard him saying that when his own sister went there because she was among us to the 10 girlfriends that the old minister had and each and everyone was given a bag. This bag, my friend told me that it was full of US dollars and my friend told me that his own sister got 300,000 US dollars just to take care of herself and to take care of the child that she had with the minister. So then my friend's sister then gave some money to my friend and said, you need to go to South Africa and invest and start a business. And then they were going to start another business in Zim as well. As for me, it is not like I come from a, from a poor family. I also come from a wealthy family, including my friend. So his sister dating the minister, it was not because she was a gold digger, but this minister and my friend's father, they were like business partners. So that is how their sister started dating that old minister. So we came here to South Africa and we started investing. When we invested here, Brother Nashi, it was my friend who was a spoiled brat. And as for me, I was someone who had been spoiled since my childhood. So we had no like responsibility at all. We just invested and we didn't care about about the company we were not even involved with how the company was being run we already had some connections here in Santon so when we came here that was when we were introduced to this other South African guy who ended up stealing the company from us because he saw that these two boys they were just stupid and they didn't even care all that we cared was going out clubbing and just drinking and spending some money on Slay Queens and this happened in 2015 and at that time we used to hire like the most famous DJs then they would come to our mansion where we used to throw out some parties with a lot of sleigh queens but then actually we were blowing so much money that we went broke and we were children of multi-millionaires but we went broke when we came here to South Africa so my friend then told me that he was about to go to Dubai but he did not want to tell me what exactly he wanted to go and do in Dubai so he went to Dubai the first time and when he came back he then went straight to Zim and he did not want to tell me what kind of business he was doing in Dubai so I thought that maybe he was undercutting me on some of the deals and when he returned back to South Africa that was when he told me that he wanted me and him to be a gold runner for this other guy who had, who had a lot of mines so he wanted his gold to come out of Zim and to go to Dubai Street. So when we went to that guy's house, a mansion, Brother Nashi, in Zim, and I can tell you that the money that I saw in his house, even though I was born in a wealthy family, but I had never seen so much money. There was money that was lying like everywhere, a lot of money. Then we were given the gold, we flew to Dubai, that is how we started making our money. So what we used to do is that when we would go to Dubai with the gold, like we won't be given the cash here in South Africa, then we will go back to Zim. So in Zim, there was this other Indian guy, but from South Africa, who had a lot of supermarket trucks as well as some warehouses. So what will happen is that after we would have delivered the gold, then that man will give the Indian the money in US dollars. Then the money will be deposited to us in our South African bank. There was even one time after we had returned from Dubai, we were given close to 1.7 million rands, Brother Nashi. 
we blew all of that money within a couple of days that one 1.7 mil it was all gone yes to the people that have never had money in their life they'll be like 1.7 you just blew it in a couple of days and they think that 1.7 is a lot but when you are hanging out in expensive restaurant and hanging out with very high maintenance slay queens 1.7 million it is nothing you can just blow it we blew that money in about a week me and my friend and the day that we found out that we had blew that 1.7 we laughed because one morning when we woke up there was a notification from this other restaurant on my friend's phone because at that expensive restaurant we were like regular customers so what we had done was that we had left one of our bank cards so that each and every time when we will go there with our slay queens then there was no need for us to settle the bill we'll just do whatever that we want then the restaurant will settle the bill for us because we used to deposit some money into that card so when my friend checked his bank he said it's fine i am going to make an transfer right now do not worry when he went on his up brother nashi then we found out that there was only three rent that was remaining out of the one point something million that we had been given by that indian guy and that is how we used to blow this money even the way that we used to uh, go around with this high maintenance slay queens that is the reason why we went so broke over and over again and mind you when we hired that south african guy to be running our company i don't want to mention his name but that guy he tricked us and he stole our company and that company it is big a uh, construction company but that guy so that these two boys they were just stupid so he started making some backroom contracts with our clients stole slowly stealing our company and now he's a millionaire that guy but we cannot blame him because me and my friend we were so irresponsible and sometimes when it will be month end when he would try to get hold of us sometimes he could not get hold of us because we would be so drunk not even knowing where the hell we were and when he would get hold of us then we will say do not worry we are coming and when we will call all the guys that used to work for us we will make them to stay maybe with him at the office complaining at him from morning until maybe 7 p.m that is when we will go there and we used to give him like a school bag that will be full of money we didn't even know how many workers we had in our construction company he was the one who knew everything who did all the paperwork then there was this other particular trip when we when i was supposed to go with my friend to zim to collect the gold but I could not go with my friend because at that time I had slept with this other slay queen. This was after me and my friend. We had gone with this slay queens. It was nine of them. We met them at this other bar. The next morning they had made us to be so happy. And my friend said, how much do you want and what do you want? Then the other one said that she wanted an iPhone 7 that it came out. So my friend then said, quickly go and bath and dress up because we are going out to the mall so we went with our slay queens then we went to this other ice store and they all bought their iphone 7s all of them but we deposited money into their accounts so that we did not want the guys at the ice store to be so suspicious like buying nine iphones on a single day so brother nashi that is what we were doing we kept on working as gold runners until my friend when i was supposed to go with him to zim to collect more gold but i had slept with this other slay queen but i don't know which slay queen had given me an sti and what will happen is that when i would sit down then by the time that i will get up from where i'll be sitting down everything will be wet because there were this fluid that was coming out of my testicles and out of my penis so it was really painful so i was still getting my treatment and at that time my friend was supposed to go and pick up another another order back home in zim when he was driving back to south africa that was when he nearly got caught when he was passing the border gate and at that time when he suspected that maybe he might get caught he then quickly took that small plastic bag that had the gold and he then went into the toilet and when he went into the toilet you know there is that small tank where the water will be stored the water that we used to flush he then opened it up and he dumped that plastic inside there and he walked out and he was just hanging around he went to the car 
when he saw the police that they were busy searching his car, they did not find anything, no trace of gold, nothing. And after that, he pretended as if he was buying some stuff and then he returned back to the toilet and picked up that small bag and he drove back to South Africa. Brother Nashi, and at that time, that was when we thought that it was far much better for us to find a traditional healer who could give us some charms so that when we are going around with the gold, then the police will never stop us. So here in Senton, there used to be this other guy who was a taxi owner, a very paranoid one. He was always suspicious of everyone because he thought that eventually his enemies, they will get to him so he always had these traditional healers at his house and those healers they were always strengthening him and he used to have a lot of traditional ceremonies being done at his house so we went to him one day and this was after my friend had told me that when he was passing through that guy's mansion he then saw that there was this other baboon but this baboon it was quite strange because it had the head of a man. So we then went there and we found him. He was busy washing one of his vintage cars because he has a lot of those ones. And we told him that we wanted him to, to help us so that we can be strengthened. He already knew that we were gold runners and he knew what we were doing. So he then said that the next time when there will be a traditional healer from Mozambique, then what he'll do is that he was going to call us. So he invited us after his healer from Mozambique had came. Then we went there. That was when we were told that some of the stuff for us to be strengthened, not to be stopped by the police, by the armed robbers, we had to come and collect them in Mozambique. So we went there to Mozambique. We were placed inside this other mud room. It was made in such a way that when you enter into that mud room, you would lose all sense of time because there was no sun sunlight that was even going in there. And we were placed inside this other big drum that was always on top of a fire. And when we got in there, when we were made to go into that uh, drum that was on top of that fire the water indeed was boiling but it did not burn me neither did it even burn my friend we then got out and then we were told that upon our arrival back in south africa we were supposed to find a maid who had a child someone who would be breastfeeding would be even be better me and my friend we were both given a lizard and we were both told that these lizards, because they were still so small, we, need, we needed to find a woman who was still breastfeeding so that these two lizards can start to breastfeed from that woman who will be working as our maid, one on the right and one on the left. We then returned back to South Africa. Then we started looking for a maid. It was not easy to find a maid. Whenever we would go to that location, we would just drive a normal car because we did not want people to realize that we were wealthy. And we used to go to this other white garment church. And at that church, that was when we spoke with our friend and we told our friend that we just wanted to assist any woman in that location who maybe was being victimized by the husband or someone who had been given a child by the husband, then the husband would have uh, ran away from her after she would have given birth then my friend told us that there was such a woman so we then spoke with that woman and we told the woman that we wanted a maid but she was she was like but as for my child my child does not want me to put him down he always wants to be on my back will i be able to work at your house won't you complain and me and my friend we said no it is fine do not worry because we are just assisting you and when she came, when she started staying at our house each and every night when she would have gone to bed, indeed she did not know that she had walked into the lion's den. And every night we would release our two lizards and they would go and they would start to breastfeed on her such that when she would wake up when the baby would be crying, trying to nestle, then the baby will see that there is no more milk, only blood that was coming out of her breast. This happened for nearly a month. That woman grew so thin even though we had given her the access to eat to cook anything that she wanted in our house when she got so sick we then told her that she could not work anymore this woman we then encouraged her to go to that same prophet that we had been bribing all along we used to give that prophet money 
like 5,000 rands, and we told the prophet that we wanted this woman to be given a false prophecy such that her own relatives they were the ones that, he, that had been bewitching her because she had gotten a good job and we bribed that prophet. And when the relatives took this woman to that prophet, that was when they were given a false prophecy. And the, and the false prophecy was that she was not supposed to take her child to the hospital. Remember that the blood of the little child was the one that was needed in our ritual. The child since could not get any food. The child grew weak and hungry. No milk was coming out. Unfortunately, the child passed away. Then it appeared in our bedroom. So we had these two hammers that we had bought. So then we took this other big metallic dish after we had taken that big metallic dish. That was when we started to pound and we started to pound until this child we had pounded it to death then after we had crushed it then our lizards came and then they started eating because they were still too young they could not eat like your solid foods that is why we had to pound this child but on that night i could not fall fast asleep because of the ritual that we had done i had to buy some sleeping medication for a couple of days so that was the first sacrifice that we made and this continued me and my friend, we slept with about 200 slay queens that we dated. I can say that about 70 of them, wherever they are, those that are still alive, but most of them, they should be dead by now. If they are still alive, maybe they are still suffering because what was happening is that after sleeping with a woman, then after I would have ejaculated, then my lizard will come and enter into the private part of that woman that I would have dated. Then it will rest into the womb as it will be busy eating all the sperms that I would have left in her private parts. Then after this lizard would have eaten all of my sperms, then it will leave its poop in there. So if the woman will be unlucky at the time that she'll be having a period, if the poop does not come out with the blood, what will happen is that this poop, it will attach itself to her uterus. Then it will become more like a growth inside her womb. Then it will multiply and multiply until it will be a lot of, until there will be a lot of fibroids in her womb. That is what happened, Brother Nashi. Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by our dear brother. Strange things indeed, they do happen in this world.